if someone is just uh, starting to take a look at the financial markets in general, in a time like this, should they just wait for the kind of the dust to settle? Or is there something that they, so like easy things that they can do in a time as volatile as this right now? What, what do you think is, is a... Uh, uh, it's it's it'd be an interesting time to just kind of start out uh, because there is a lot of unknown uh, for you know uh, I know a lot of you know traders even just you know such as myself the the volatility that we've seen you know kind of come out of this has been has been uh, I I've I've liked it but it's not necessarily for everybody you know mm. what I mean the more volatile markets are typically kind of the the more dangerous they can be for a lot of people that don't necessarily know what they're doing. And so like a lot of people, when they come into this, if they're brand new, they're typically in more of kind of like that buy and hold, you know, type mentality, not necessarily looking to trade something. So they buy like companies that they, they may like, you know, they could buy Apple or Starbucks. And the idea is that they're buying these things just with it kind of looking to go up. Like they're not, um, they're not really kind of timing when they're getting in, when they're getting out. They don't really have much of a plan for the downside. And uh, this is um, the, the market conditions that we are in right now. You don't want to have kind of that whole just like buy and hold, you know, tight mentality, no kind of plan for the downside. You really kind of have to come into, you know, these type of markets with um, some type of plan, some type of strategy. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, and there's a kind of a process that you kind of have to go through as well, because there's a lot of different markets. Markets have different personalities. So if someone was more into kind of that quick kind of in and out, you know, um, the Forex market, which is primarily what I operate in, wouldn't necessarily be for them. You know, that would be right. more for like futures. But if someone was looking to get into something and they have more of a mentality where they maybe want to be in something for, you know, days, weeks, months, you know, that's... Um, that would be a little bit more of kind of a forex, a forex mentality, and then you get into equities. It's kind of the more investing. So just it's just a matter of like what their personality is and what their focus will be. I, I'm I'm really glad you said that. In in any other industry, like in real estate, like when I, I and I've been to a ton of these real estate coaching and seminar type of uh, events back when we were allowed to go to events. <laughs> um, and and one of the common themes that every coach will drill into your brain is the idea of you gotta have an exit strategy, yeah. right? You and and you wanna you do the math, for example. But for some reason, when people get involved in stocks, they, there's a different kind of or any kind of a financial asset class rather. Uh, there's there's a different kind of mentality. It's just like oh, how much money can I make? And then I let me just yeah. jump in. And there isn't really as much focus on the whole exit strategy and doing the math as we see more commonly in real estate. Can, do you have any idea, like, like, I found it to be like a phenomenon. Do you have any thoughts on, on that, why that, why that is? I, you know, I think it just, um, I think just maybe by, by nature, people are optimistic, you know, so they're always kind of, their plan is always how much money I can make. Their plan is always on the upside and they don't really like, the only real downside plan they have is just to cross their fingers. You know, that's, that's the whole thing. So I, I see it a lot, you know, um, you know, I've obviously worked with a lot of people over, you know, many years and it, it, the, what I notice most when I'm working with somebody brand new, the, always the question in is how much money can I make? How much money can I make And the, the very, the question that's always missing is how much can I lose to get? You know what I mean? So they haven't, they haven't uh, necessarily like, maybe a lot of them, they haven't necessarily kind of felt that loss yet. So they don't really know what that feeling's like. But as soon as you feel it, then all of a sudden you're like, okay, this plan, I need a plan not only for the upside, but I need a plan for the downside as well. But the problem is a lot of people don't even have a plan for the upside. You know, they just, it's, it's cross fingers for either way. Right. Right. The, the whole, like I, the hopefulness of buying like a lottery ticket kind of yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe we can um, help these people out for a little bit because re re vicariously, uh, because recently we saw uh, like a, a crash in oil, particularly in oil futures, like oil futures yeah. went negative and a lot of people were like, how can something go negative? That doesn't make any sense. So just walk us through what happened, you know, from a high level perspective, what happened with oil and yeah. how did so many people get caught in, in this, in this thing? Cause we, you know, they were, cause it was at a discount for so long. A lot of people thought it was a good idea to get in and buy. 
but they got chewed up. What happened? This pandemic, it, it really couldn't have come at a worse time even for the oil market because in the oil market, you already had like a, like a, just a kind of like a little kind of war going on in, in these, in OPEC, in these oil producing countries. And they were just like, um, and they were just kind of playing games with each other. You know, there was already like, there was already too much oil coming into the world, even when everybody was still doing their thing. There wasn't enough demand, but they just kept pumping it and they kept pumping it and they kept pumping it. And then all of a sudden the pandemic happens and they still keep pumping and they keep pumping and they keep pumping. And, but no one's driving their cars, no one's going on cruises, no one's flying on airplanes. And the problem is, is that um, this, these, there's just like, they pumped it, there's no demand, and then it became, there's nowhere to put it. And so now it got to the problem, like they, someone, someone, they just keep rolling over these future contracts. And eventually like someone has to actually accept that oil. And it got the supply chains. It's got. It, they're so filled up that it's gotten to the point that those last people, they're gonna, they're gonna, their people are gonna pay you to take the oil, which is this like no one's ever seen this before. And um, and uh, you know, it, it's kind of happening again. There's a huge, you know, huge down day, you know, in the oil market. Like, there's gonna have, they're gonna have to figure out. Like, they're gonna have to even cut even more. You know, otherwise, like in, without there's without further cuts, there's a very strong chance that oil could go, oil could go even lower. You know, so it's it's wild. I'm gonna ask you more, so a question that you might hear from like a like an eight year old after hearing that is like, why do they keep making it if nobody wants it? If there's no demand for it, why won't they just cut further? What's the what's the conflict in in there is like there's there is like a squeeze you know there is like some of these countries are literally trying to hurt each other and put businesses and you know companies and everything out of business so there's a certain like all of these countries are basically underwater no one can no one can print oil or can you know take oil out of the ground and keep paying somebody to take it eventually someone something's going to have to give you know so like if someone is brand new to kind of financial markets probably one of the scariest places for someone to attempt to start probably would be you know uh in in the oil market but um you know you can you know i imagine you know and it's there's you know speculation thing there but like we you see further kind of cuts or things like that or changes in opec policy watch how fast oil just go poof, you know just right jumps up so and it's, uh, if you had to give them i hope some of them are watching but like if you had to give them one piece of advice to you know just to be safe uh like what what would you what would you tell a, 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 like a rookie investor or someone who's like oh i gotta get it on oil you know and they're all like really jacked up on the excitement what, what kind of advice would you give them uh you know i meet a lot of traders that are a lot of people that um they just they just want to like there's a lot of people that look at you know they try to make their decisions based off of, you know, technical trading alone, like being able to pull up price history and then just try to find like areas where they feel things are going to come in and come out. Now, what's really driving the oil market isn't necessarily kind of the technical side of things, you know, pulling up a chart and finding uh, areas where they think, you know, they, it's a good place to buy, good place to sell. Like if you're getting into the oil market, you have to like, you need to, you need to be paying attention to what's going on and kind of just that, just the whole world, and all the fundamentals around it, because it's the, really the fundamentals that are going to be driving, uh, driving oil prices. And so, like, if there's, you know, changes in OPEC or just, you know, more stuff comes out on storage, that's what's going to drive. And that's really what's driving oil up and down. So you have to, you got to know, you, you need to know what's going on in that world. You can, right. So you have to pay attention. Yeah. I mean, I know there's a lot of, yeah. Uh, technical traders there's technical trader groups like on Facebook that are like oh it's all about charts and the price action but you know the, the global politics matters as well right that can it's it's the politics it's the pandemic like all of this like even if like um, if we start if, if if things start to ease and people can kind of go back to work and people can go back on airplanes and things along those lines like even just things like that are going to create more demand for for oil and you know oil can kind of move to the upside but like you're gonna have to like in this world that we live in right now 
You have to pay attention to what's going on with, you know, developments with coronavirus. You have to understand what's going on with, um, you know, the central banks, the Fed and the stimulus packages. You got to be paying attention to OPEC. And if you're not um, kind of paying attention to those moving parts, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not really a, probably not something you'd want to be in right now. I've heard that like, in order to trade successfully in the financial markets, you need an edge, right? Yeah. And um, not paying attention to those types of things almost is like, oh, I'm trading purposely with less of an edge. Yeah, exactly. Than, than everybody so, else. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, this is uh, more of uh, for fun than anything else, but what are, you, what are your plans for when we're allowed to go outside and be normal again? Do you have anything that, you, that you've decided that you want to do? It's going, when they reopen the economy, when they just said everything is open again, I feel like it's going to be like Y2K New Year's Eve. Like it's just, <laughs> it's just going to be absolutely insane out there. But um, I'm just looking forward to uh, being able to be in a room with, you know, friends and family. And I'd love to just go to a, a Mexican restaurant and just be among, a pe among the people. I just, you know, I, I just, I just, I, I don't even I know restaurants. Right. What'd you say? I miss restaurants. I oh, I miss restaurants so bad. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be the very first thing I do. Like I'm in a restaurant, no doubt about it. Awesome. Well, uh, I, I thank you for so much for joining us today. I think this was a, a really enlightening, eye-opening conversation from a perspective of a world expert on currencies. This is uh, this was awesome. For those of you uh, that are joining us for the first time while you're here, make sure you subscribe and hit follow and hit the notification bell because I do daily content just like this. And so I will uh, see you guys tomorrow. Stay tuned from the next video from YouTube. Thanks, everybody.